right. Well, before we get into the program, it's time for this week's joke of the week. So the joke of the week is why couldn't the flower ride its bike? Uh, something about pedals, I'm going to guess. It's pedals broke. Oh, it pedals, it's yeah, pedals broke. Yeah, All right. Yeah. This All right, so the joke of the week is brought to you by Rescue.com. American-made rescue products keep your family, home, and yard protected from pests, insects like wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, flies, ants, and more. Learn more at Rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E.com. So, with that being said, um, we want to talk about some good insects. We're going to go over about five beneficial insects that you want in your backyard, you want in your flower bed, you want in the, in the garden. And if you don't have them, how to create the habitat in which we'll invite them in. We'll start with ladybugs, the most common, most, uh, um, you know, what, what is a good bug? Ladybug. Outside of bees, that's, you know, that's the next one in line. So, yeah, so they are um, predators. They eat up to 40 aphids an hour, and they do start out as larvae, and then they they grow, like, so they'll start as larvae on the plant, grow eating the, um, the aphids, etc. And I think one common misconception is, well, people will buy ladybugs to release them in their garden. Right. And there's no, so you could do this. But there's no guarantee they're going to Minimal stay. success because you've got to release them. Uh, you've got to wet down the area so they have moisture to um, be hydrated with. You want to do it in the evening if you do it because they, they will fly away. So it's not saying that it is a negative thing to buy ladybugs and then have them introduced into your garden. There is some steps in which you can utilize to best keep some of them around. But if you're buying 1,500 ladybugs or 500, not all of them is going to be there tomorrow morning. Right. Yep, that's absolutely correct. But you want to create an environment in which they will hang around, naturally come in, and this is with uh, flowers and... uh, And we're going to get to that. Okay, okay. You know, we don't have to say that after each one. So next one is green lace wings, and they feed on pollen and nectar, but their um, their larvae... Uh, prey on soft body garden pests, so like again aphids. Yeah, and caterpillars. So, mm-hmm. um, so caterpillars are. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure if all of them are bad for your garden. You would probably have to figure that out because species them, by species. Yeah, species by species, region by region. But yeah, green lace wings. That's good for that. Prey mantis. Now here, where the station is, the show originates the show from. Originates from. Thank you. Um, prey mantis, we don't have, I don't think No, it's a southern thing. Yeah. It, it, uh, it's, it's not something that is predominantly, uh, seen here in the upper portions of the Midwest. And, you know, uh, out of Kansas City and southern Illinois, uh, th- that's, that's a common everyday thing. Now, praying mantises are a very beneficial insect to have. They eat a lot of good, bad, they eat a lot of bad things, which is good for your garden to get them out of. Absolutely. So, yeah, the praying mantis. Um, and so, yeah, they eat the, um, they eat moths, beetles, flies. Now, there are good beetles, but they eat, you know, all sorts of stuff. And they will also eat each other, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is something to keep in mind. So, spiders, a lot of people think, oh, spiders are bad. Spiders are evil. Burn the house down. But spiders, spiders in your garden are good. They create spider webs, which ca- uh, captures insects, a net, and they devour them, as well as they uh, they they control different things about what's going on. Um, they they attack insects. Uh, jumping spiders and wolf spiders especially are good for keeping pests under control in your garden. So we get this question uh, on, a, on a fairly regular basis. I have spiders in my garden. How do I get them out of the garden? You don't want to get spiders out of your garden. You want to, yes, they're, they made a web across the walk path. Yeah, it's a little encumbersome, uh, but you do not want to eradicate them because they have a, a very beneficial um pest control management to offer to your garden they do um and again they yeah they help control pests a lot of these i don't know i guess if this stuff freaks you out you probably shouldn't garden i don't know what to tell you um so ground beetles and they are predatory beetles and their larvae and as adults they will attack or eat things such as ne- ne- nematodes. Nem- no, thank you nematodes caterpillars thrips 
weevil slugs and silverfish um a lot a lot like japanese beetles will also get rid of those too so you don't want to crush every beetle you see you want to do some research well, we have 800 to $1,500 pieces of equipment in most of our pockets that easily can take a photograph and do a search based on the image, and it's fairly accurate telling you this is what this is and if it's good or bad. Right, yeah. So we do have that option, and whether it's good or bad. Um, so doing other things on it. Might as well find, you know, so, do some yeah. research on it. Soldier beetle, and I'm sure there's apps, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there are. Soldier beetles um, are another thing. Now, I don't think we get them here. When I was looking at the picture where we are, but they are kind of in the upper portions of the United States, depending on how, how, south, how far south you are. But they are um, a part of Mexican bean beetles. And then Colorado potato beetles, which I know a lot of people find problematic at times. Well, let's let's talk about, since we've labeled and went through several, what can we do in order to A, attract, and B, hold these insects into our, our backyard and, and work with nature instead of against nature by buying chemicals to spray what we think might be the problem? So one of the first things you can do is you can grow okay so well i don't i don't know what you want to call the first things but you can grow long blooming plants and also early blooming plants so things like alyssum um and then other biennials like carrots or parsley that love to blossom this will draw the beneficials to your yard early in the spring and this allows them to to kind of find a home there um, and then the other thing is leaving yard debris. So you might think in the fall, I need to pick up all this yard debris, blah, blah, blah. But if you leave it there, these beneficials will lay their larva. Um, sometimes they'll find a home there. And then right away in the spring, if you're like, as soon as the nice first day, you're like, let me just rip all this uh, yard debris out. And then you have two more snows just, and yeah. a 13 degree night. So just leave them until we get, you know, kind of into the warmer parts of the Well, we've been conditioned and many people, you know, they live in situations where the neighbor's doing it. So I got to clean up or I get penalized if I don't clean up at a certain time because I live in a certain group of houses that's controlled by a bunch of people that want to be dictators. Right. Well, we, you know, we can't fix all those problems, but I'm, what we can. I'm just being can, realistic with you. All right. Um, another thing is, is to plant a, or not plant, uh, put in a water feature. And this also will attract bees a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And you want bees. And we didn't talk about bees because obviously they kind are of, beneficial. Yeah. We didn't but, talk about yeah, any pollinators. That, that was the given. Yeah. We didn't talk about any pollinators, but that's okay. I didn't want to want to talk about the, the other ones. Um, so add a water feature. This will allow the good bugs to come and get drinks. And Now, you don't have to have a time. fountain or a pond. You, there are ways in which to incorporate water features and dishes with rocks in order for these insects to get moisture and then fly away or crawl away. So it's not like you have to invest $1,500 and have a landscaper come in and dig a, a pond or a 12-foot fountain in order for you to have a couple of uh, praying mantises or ladybugs to hang around in the backyard. There's many ways around in which a water feature can be adapted into your landscape or your garden without having a whole lot of cost to go with it. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. Um, and then you can also grow native plants. So what you would want to do is you'd want to research native plants for wherever you are and growing those is going to naturally bring in native and good bugs. Most of your university extension offices in your county will have either on their website or printout available of what the native plants in your particular area is. And that can change region to region, state to state and county by county in some areas and elevation as well. Right. Right. That's that's correct. So, um, and then also, if you use pesticides, whether they be organic or not, it is possible to kill some beneficial insects. Um, it, if you, especially if you use non-organic, um, so you want to keep that in mind. You might want to limit your pesticide usage to keep your ecosystem in your yard very happy and healthy and thriving. Walton's Inc. Uh, Walton's Inc. Uh, dot com sponsor of the Garden with Join Holly Radio Show has multiple items available for you, whether you're a hunter or you just want to season up some of the that meat or vegan burgers on the grill. 
Yeah, so Walton's Inc., you know, they have, we know you care about canning, preserving your fruits and vegetables, but what about the meat? At Walton's, you can get the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. They do use Excalibur seasonings, which is the same ones that professional processors use, and they also have meatgistics.com. It's to help educate people on the hows and whys of meat processing. So if you go to meatgistics.com, that's where the information is. Waltonsinc.com has all everything you need to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's everything but the meat. You can use code GROW50 to save 10% off your orders of $50 or more. Again, waltonsinc.com. GROW50 is the coupon code.